Good evening. This is part two um, of my uh, true crime stories. Actually, this is a tape more like a take to um, telling the same story. Um, but uh, just thought I would try it again. Um, this is, I guess, if you are sensitive or sensitive viewer, this is not for you. Um, this is a story about an incident that happened in 1965 that really, really bothered me on many levels, um, and I'll just tell you the story. Uh, in 1965, in Indianapolis, um, Indiana, uh, there was a 16-year-old girl named Sylvia Likens and her, it was actually Sylvia Marie Likens and her, uh, Sister Jenny, who, who had had polio, she had braces on her legs. They were the middle children of uh, five kids the Likens family had five kids and uh, they were 16 and 15 Sylvia was 16 and they were on their own because um, their mom had left their dad and taken them with them and moved to Indianapolis and gotten sh arrested for shoplifting and uh, food actually for the kids and so they're uh, they were hanging out with this family, um, who had, uh, teenage kids their age, um, the Banizuskis, uh, there was a girl, Paula, who was one year older than Sylvia, and, uh, a girl, uh, Stephanie, who was, um, Jenny's age, and these girls, Sylvia and Jenny, were you know, typical teenagers. They liked the Beatles. Um, Paul was um, Sylvia's favorite Beatle. And um, she was just, you know, really sweet girl, very innocent. And anyway, her parents, uh, Lester and Betty Likens, were carnival workers. Well, uh, they were hanging out at uh, Gertrude Benazuski's house. Gertrude Benazuski was a 37-year-old uh, divorcee with one illegitimate baby that was seven months. About She had seven children, and um, she was unusual because she was a single mother that was... Uh, not very common at the time, but they were very poor. They lived in a two-story house, one bathroom. They only had one spoon in that house, and they would wash it and take turns eating the Campbell soup. You know, it was pretty much white bread in Campbell soup and Coca-Cola. Um, so Gertrude um, had, like, a lot of teenagers hang around her house. She let them smoke. She was like, acted like the cool mom, whatnot. And Lester came there looking for his daughters and he was trying to get back together with Betty, his wife, and they were carnival workers. And he thought that maybe if he and Betty could be, you know, free of the kids for a while, maybe they could work on their marriage or something. So he asked Gertrude, who he really didn't know, in fact, in the court, um, I read all the court transcripts, um, he didn't know her, he had just met her, but he asked her if she could watch his kids, keep his kids, um, let him live with her for $20 a week, which was good, pretty good money, I guess, in 1965, uh, so, um, and she said, yeah, so she could use, she, she would do, uh, sewing, you know, take in sewing for, for a living. And, uh, 
so he left his daughters. Um, I guess it wasn't so bad in the beginning, um, but when the check, one time the check was like a day late, his child support check, he wasn't actually a check, he'd send like cash or a money order and she beat the girls. But then the the abuse started getting aimed on Sylvia um, because it was a lot of jealousy towards Sylvia. Sylvia was really pretty and cute and lively. Boys liked her. I mean, she was very innocent, but she's like a threat, I guess, to Paula and, and to Gertrude. And also Paula was pregnant and somehow I think maybe Sylvia might've said something and they got really mad and started started saying uh you know just totally um saying bad things about Sylvia and pretty much you know n Sylvia it got to the point where the abuse was so bad that um Stephanie's boyfriend was actually like practicing judo on Sylvia and uh, there were unspeakable things, um, done and, uh, or that she was made to do. Um, and then she was not allowed to go to school. She was in the base, stuck in the basement, tied up, starved, cold, no blankets, um, not allowed to use the bathroom. She was, they gave her like scalding baths teenagers came in burned her with cigarettes i mean it was like nazi concentration camp stuff so the weird part of it is and why i got obsessed with the story i saw two movies about it one was the girl next door which was more fictional they changed things up and then the other one was an american crime with uh catherine um can't remember the actress that played gertie but there was also the girl that played Sylvia actually looked a lot like her. It was her. Um, she also played in hard candy. Um, but, uh, Sylvia was just basically tortured and there was a boy that sort of had a crush on Gertrude and he was kind of part of the, uh, the abuse, a big part of it. And he, Gertrude had him tattoo with a hot needle. I'm a prostitute and proud of it on Sylvia's abdomen. And I think that was one, that was one of the causes of her death. Um, just the shock to her body. Um, it's very, very disturbing. Um, there were neighbors that saw that a girl was being abused and did nothing. Um, the girls, Sylvia and her sister got in a lot of trouble for trying to call their parents because they had Sylvia, uh, Gertrude didn't have a phone and they used a pay phone and they were accused of stealing money. Um, I think they sold, sold some bottle, um, soda bottles or something. In those days, you could get like a nickel back for your soda bottle. and um, But they would get in trouble for everything. So um, they told their grown-up sister, Diane, who lived in Indianapolis. She didn't believe them. But then she came to the house and was lied to by Gertrude. And uh, Jenny was being complicit in the lies. I don't know why. I guess she was afraid for herself that, you know, that she would, but Sylvia told Jenny that I'm dying, that I'm going to die. I can tell I'm going to die soon. And she did try to escape near the end in the night that she, before she passed away, she banged and banged and banged in the basement with something to try to get someone to call the police or do something and nobody did like it's like if I were her I'd feel like there was no God you know
one of the books I've read every book I could get my hands on uh, mostly on Kindle but I couldn't get any on talking book um I I um looked at one the John Dean book he was a reporter at the time but it was very small print and I don't like his version he's too sympathetic to one of the kids who you know was a part of it but I uh so there are photographs of what happened was Sylvia by morning Sylvia had passed away and Gertrude had forced her to make a false confession that some boys she'd gone off with some boys who'd done this to her of course, it was a lie. It was a ridiculous forgery. And um, simply was not true. Um, Sylvia was covered with infected sores, cigarette burns. Um, you know, her her she had bitten all the way through her lip. Her nails were broken, completely broken backwards. Um, her skin was burned from scalding baths and cigarette burns. And um, she had just been completely tortured. And the school K nurse came looking for her. The preacher came looking for her. She had just gotten saved at church, ironically. And they would just be lied to that she ran away or that she was at a, she was at juvenile or something. But she was right down there in the basement. No one went down there, tied up, cold. It's cold in Indiana and this, this was winter time. So, um... What happened was they almost passed over the note, but Jenny pulled aside a police officer and she said, get me out of here and I'll tell you everything. And it went to court and Gertrude was found guilty of murder and Paula was found guilty of murder. Uh, Stephanie got immunity for testifying against her family. Um, the boys involved got juvie. Um, the younger children got, went to foster homes or the baby was adopted out. Um, and... I read the entire transcripts just you know, because everyone was questioned, you know, even, even her parents. Um, it's very strange that nobody was able to intervene, but this was one of the worst child abuse cases I've ever heard of. And when Gertrude was released on parole from prison, there was some protest um, but she died not, you know, a few years later of lung cancer. They were all heavy, heavy smokers in those days. Anyway, um, so they eventually tore down that house because it was a attraction for morbid curiosity and, you know, people were always making ghost stories of it and you know, things like that. And, um, it became a church parking lot and there's a, there's a, um, like a monument in memory of, uh, Sylvia, you know, rest in peace, Sylvia. She's an angel and she's with God and she's in heaven. And, uh, but, um, her sister Jenny ended up living with the, uh, going to live with the prosecutor's family. So anyway, um, 
like I said, there have been books written on it. Uh, I've thought about writing a book on it. I, I don't know. We'll see. It's, uh, I was kind of obsessed with the topic and it's, I have a song called Sylvia's song on both on my blog, the words and a recording of it on my YouTube channel called Sage Walsh. Anyway, thank you for listening and, um, Maybe we'll uh, do another story soon. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you.